Hi, kindergartners. We're going to finish our lesson from last week, but before we jump back into it, I wonder if you can remember what the big question was that we asked ourselves last week. Hmm. Hopefully you remember that the big question was, how did bad things come into God's good world? How did bad things come into God's good world? Let's see if you remember any more when we review the story. You probably remember that when Adam and Eve disobeyed God, it was a really sad day for everyone in the world. We learned that it wasn't just Adam and Eve that was affected by their sin. It was the whole world for all of time, and it would never be like it was in the beginning when God made it so perfectly good. Because of Adam and Eve's sin, they no longer had the wonderful, special closeness with God that they had before. Their bodies would get sick and die, and they didn't always live happily together anymore. People became greedy and selfish, and they didn't care for others the way God made them to. The whole world didn't stay as bad as it was right at first. The sin spread and made things worse and worse, especially the people, until finally the whole world was filled with people disobeying God and hurting each other. We talked about how no one knew how terribly sin had hurt the world more than one person. God. God could see how sin hurt every part of his good world inside and out, and what saddened him the most was what he could see deep inside each person's heart. There used to be beautiful love for God and people in their hearts, and now that was broken. Now there was sin and sadness in their hearts instead. At last, God's judgment upon their sin was coming. God would send a flood to do away with all who chose to keep on disobeying him. And with them would go all of the animals and birds and creeping things that were on the earth. We wondered, was this to be the end of the earth? Would there ever be any more people or creatures to live on it? God would have been fair to do that. All people had chosen to disobey him. All had sinful hearts and lives. It is right for God to punish sin. He would not be good if he didn't hate it. But God is not only fair and good. He is oh so merciful. Mercy is treating someone better than they deserve, and that is exactly how God chose to treat sinful people. He had even woven his mercy into the good plan he made before he had made the world. Amazing. Yes, his good plan for creation would go on. He was keeping to it. He would spare some of all the creatures and the little family of the one man who turned away from his sin and turned to God to love him and obey him. Do you know what the name of this man was? That one man was named Noah. God told Noah his plan. I am sending a flood to wipe out everything that lives on earth because of how sinful everyone has become. But you and your family I will save. I will also save some of every kind of creature too, God promised him. After the flood, I will give the earth a new beginning for these creatures in your family. You and your sons need to build a huge wooden boat to fit everyone in. Fill it with food for everyone to eat. Then I will send the flood, God told Noah. A huge flood? A big boat? Hundreds of creatures to feed and care for? Could it really be? Who could imagine such a thing? Who could build such a thing? It would have been tempting to laugh and go on with life. It didn't look like rain. The sun came up in the morning and the moon and stars at night. A flood? Really? What would Noah do? Would he believe God and obey him? What do you think Noah did? Noah lived by faith. He loved God and believed him. He would build the huge boat. He did not have to be able to imagine something for it to be true. He did not have to know how to do something for God to help him be able to do it. Yes, Noah believed God and he would obey. God was pleased with Noah's faith and accepted him. Off to the forest to get lumber, Noah and his sons went. Chop, chop, chop. 
down went lots of trees. Then hammer, 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 they worked and worked and worked until the whole big boat was built. At last, they made big pots of black sticky pitch. They slathered the hot glue all over the sides of the boat. This would keep it leak free. What a huge boat it was! People wondered what Noah was doing as he and his sons worked away. They came to find out, and as they came, Noah warned them about God's punishment. Stop disobeying God and living your own sinful way. Turn back to God and his good ways. His punishment will soon come upon those who do not, Noah told them. What a long time it took to build that huge boat. What a lot of time people had to hear about God's punishment coming. What a lot of time they had to turn away from disobeying him. But did they? What do you think? No, they did not. Not even one. How very, very sad. At last, the boat was all done. Noah and his family filled it up with supplies of every kind. Food for them and food for the creatures that were coming. And come, those creatures did. Creatures of every kind, from the woods and from the deserts, from the mountains and the valleys. Out of their dens and nests, the animals came. A mommy and daddy, creature of every kind. And even more than two of some kinds, the Lord sent them all away from their homes into the boat. Last of all, Noah and his family got on the boat. The Lord shut the huge door behind them. Everyone was safe inside. Dark storm clouds gathered overhead. Then down, 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 the rain began to fall. Everything happened just as the Lord said it would. The rain kept falling and falling, days and days and days. The water rose higher and higher. All the creatures and people outside the boat died, but inside the boat, all were safe. Then one day, the rain stopped. Noah and his family looked outside at the world, amazed. They had never seen anything like it. There were no trees, no animals, no people, no mountains or land to be seen. Everywhere they looked, there was only water. They were so thankful to be in the boat. They were so thankful that God had saved them. God sent a big wind that swept down over the water to dry it up. Whoosh! 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 went the wind, day and night slowly, but surely drying up the floodwaters. At last, Noah and his family could see land stick out of the water like little bumps. More and more water dried up and went away, uncovering the hills and valleys. At last, it was time to get off the boat. God said to Noah, Take your family and all the creatures off the boat and begin life again on the earth. Have families and fill the earth, just like I told Adam and Eve and the creatures long ago. Noah and his family obeyed God. How wonderful it was to get off that boat and stand on dry land again. What would they do first? Run around and stretch their legs? Start building a new home? Go find some fresh food? Maybe just sit down and enjoy the sunshine? There were so many things they wanted to do, but Noah didn't do any of those things. He knew there was something else he needed to do first. Can you guess what it was? The first thing Noah did was give God a worship gift of thanks. Oh, how much he and his family had to thank him for. He had saved their lives and given them a new start. God made a promise to Noah and his family that day. Never again will I destroy the whole earth with a giant flood. I'm putting a rainbow up in the sky as a reminder to you and all my people of my promise. Then Noah and his family began the work God gave them. They had families and began to fill the earth again. Surely this time everything would be right. Surely this time people would obey God as they should, right? What do you think? Wrong. You see, though Noah was a good man who loved God, he and his family still had that same terrible sin in their hearts that everyone else had. It wouldn't be long before the world once more would become filled with people who would choose to disobey God 
and not turn from it. But there wouldn't just be people who disobeyed God. There would also be people like Noah who would fight against that sin in their hearts. They would say sorry to God for their sins and live for him. They would keep on trusting that the day would come when God would send the promised Savior to save them. These were God's people and he would save them. And at just the right time, that Savior did come. It was Jesus, God's Son. He suffered and died on the cross for the sins of all who would ever turn from their sins and trust in him as their Savior. On the third day, he rose from the dead, proving that he really had beaten sin and death for God's people. He can be our Savior too when we turn away from our sins and trust in him as our Savior. So our big question was, how did bad things come into God's good world? And we discovered that the answer was bad things came into God's good world through sin. It started with Adam and Eve when they sinned. And then we see with Noah and the ark that there were lots of people across the whole world who were sinning. And it was getting worse and worse and worse. And so God sent the flood, right, to start fresh. So our answer is that bad things came into God's good world through sin, right? Let's take a look at our verse. Our verse says, The Lord looks down from heaven on the sons of men to see if there are any who understand, any who seek God. But all have turned aside. They have together become corrupt. There is no one who does good, not even one. Psalm 14, 2 through 3. So God sent a flood because there was not even one who had turned away from their sin. Do you remember when Noah was talking to the people and saying, turn away, and not even one did that? But did you catch the good news at the end of the story? How at just the right time, God sent a Savior who died on the cross for us, right? So when we turn away from our sin and we trust in Jesus, then we get to have that special closeness with God that Adam and Eve had in the very beginning. If you want to know more about that, then talk to your parents. Or maybe you can talk to one of the pastors at church, and I'm sure we would love to help you learn more about what that means, to have that special closeness with God. We can't wait to see you back next week when we play a review game for our story that we've been working on. See you then!